Patti Lamar was an Austrian-born American actress who got her start in a little-known Czech erotic film called Ecstasy. She eventually found her way to America, and after signing a contract with MGM, her first big break was in the 1938 film Algiers. But even though she had a fairly prolific Hollywood film career, perhaps her biggest contribution to the world was inventing something we can almost guarantee you use on a daily basis. Keep watching to find out what exactly Lamar's groundbreaking invention was, how it helped the U.S. military, and more details about her life in which she was basically given the short end of the stick despite being the genius behind one of the most influential inventions of the 20th century. Hedy Lamar's Early Life Born Hedwig Eva Maria Keisler on November 9, 1914 in Vienna, Austria, Lamar grew up as a Christian despite the fact that both of her parents had Jewish heritage. Her father was a bank director from Lemberg, and her mother was a pianist who hailed from Budapest. As a child, Lamar took an interest in acting and was obsessed with theater and film. When she was 12, she won a beauty contest in Vienna, getting her first taste of the spotlight. She also had a love for learning about how things work, and her father, who likewise dabbled in inventing, would often take her on walks and explain how technology and society functions. Lamar was discovered by an Austrian filmmaker when she was just a teen. She was recognized by the international film community after starring in the sexually provocative Czechoslovakian film Ecstasy in 1933. After a brief and turbulent marriage with Fritz Mandy, a rich Austrian ammunition manufacturer who put guns into the hands of Nazis, Lamar traveled to London where she met MGM bigwig Louis B. Meyer. After revealing her previous film work in Ecstasy, he invited her to come to America, and once she arrived in Hollywood, she signed a contract with Meyer's film studio. This was when she adopted her stage name and left her old Austrian name behind. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First for more, and stick around for a lot more on Hedy Lamar. Hedy Lamar was a unique breed of Hollywood star. After Lamar's first American film, Algiers, hit theaters, she immediately became a box office sensation. Almost overnight, she'd become the new Hollywood it girl. Lamar went on to appear in quite a few notable and well-received films throughout the 30s and 40s, and was reportedly even producer Hal Wallace's first choice for the lead in his 1943 classic Casablanca, though that role ultimately went to Ingrid Bergman. Lamar was often referenced in the media at the time as one of the most beautiful and exotic leading ladies in Tinseltown. And her name also was getting associated with some of the most famous men of her time as well. One of these eligible bachelors was the wealthy and eccentric business tycoon and pilot Howard Hughes. Hughes and Lamar dated for a spell, but instead of being attracted merely to his wealth and prestige, Lamar was more interested in his desire for innovation. Her interest in the sciences, which her father helped cultivate, had been repressed by her burgeoning Hollywood career. But Hughes helped reignite that flame within her mind. He gave her a small set of scientific lab equipment that she used in her trailer while on set. While Lamar had an inventing table and workshop set up at her home, this small set that Hughes gifted her allowed her to work on her inventions while taking a break between shots. Knowing she had a passion for engineering, Hughes took her to his airplane manufacturing facilities and gave her a behind-the-scenes look at how these aircraft were built while introducing her to scientists and engineers. Lamar was inspired by this and especially intrigued by Hughes's desire to create faster planes that could be marketed to the U.S. military. After buying a book covering the aerodynamics of birds and fish, she took that knowledge and crafted a new kind of wing design for Hughes's airplanes. After she showed her work to Hughes, he declared her a genius. And a genius she was. In 1942, at the peak of Lamar's Hollywood career, she met a composer, George Antiel, at a dinner party. Antiel and Lamar hit it off and started to swap invention ideas. Eventually, they were awarded a patent on August 11, 1942, for a novel type of radio signaling device called a secret communication system which used an ever-changing set of radio frequencies to keep enemy intelligence operatives from decoding covert messages. Originally, this tech, which was technically called a frequency-hopping spread system, was designed to outwit the Nazis by guiding Allied torpedoes in World War II. 
But later, this system became a crucial stepping stone in the development of technology for both military communication systems as well as cell phones. Eventually, the tech gave rise to technologies like Wi-Fi, GPS, CDMA, and Bluetooth. But since the wide range of applications of that tech wasn't fully understood until decades later, Lamar and Antiel sadly didn't get the recognition they fully deserved. In fact, it was many years later until anyone outside the military even knew what they developed. The Navy initially shelved their invention and wouldn't dust it off again and realize its profound importance until later. Beyond that, their invention was also technically difficult to implement. Two decades later, however, an updated version of Lamar and Antilles' design appeared on Navy ships during the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis. It wasn't until 1997 that Lamar was honored with the Electronic Frontier Foundation Pioneer Award. The same year, she also became the first woman to receive the Bulby Nass Spirit of Achievement Award, an honor often regarded as the Oscars of inventing. In 2014, Lamar and Antille were inducted, albeit posthumously, into the National Inventors Hall of Fame. Lamar's Later Film Career Seven years after inventing the tech that eventually earned her the nickname of the Mother of Wi-Fi, Lamar appeared in her most successful Hollywood film, Cecil B. DeMille's 1949 biblical drama, Samson and Delilah. The film won two Oscars and scored big marks with critics. Lamar went on to appear in films like A Lady Without Passport, which ended up being a flop, and the more successful films Canyon and My Favorite Spy. Her film career then started to decline. After trying her hand out as a producer and playing multiple roles in 1954's Loves of Three Queens, she ended up losing millions of dollars when the project failed to impress critics and audiences alike. In 1957, she played Joan of Arc in the film The Story of Mankind, yet another commercial flop. Her final film was the 1958 thriller The Female Animal. She was supposed to appear in the 1966 film Picture Mommy Dead, but was replaced by Zsa Zsa Gabor after collapsing from nervous exhaustion during filming. Hedy Lamarr never received compensation for her inventions. After leaving Hollywood behind, Lamarr designed a ski resort in the late 50s in Aspen, Colorado, with then-husband W. Howard Lee. After that project failed to be profitable, Lamar found herself broke and desperate, despite the fact she previously invented technologies that would eventually become universally implemented. In 1966, she was arrested in L.A. for shoplifting. Those charges were eventually dropped. But she was later arrested on similar charges in Florida for stealing $21.48 worth of eye drops and laxatives. In the 70s, she spent most of her time in seclusion. Although she was offered several film, TV, and theatrical roles, none of them interested her. In 1974, she filed a $10 million lawsuit against Warner Brothers, claiming that Mel Brooks's parody of her name in the film Blazing Saddles was infringing on her privacy. Brooks responded by saying he felt flattered and settled out of court for an undisclosed sum. In 1981, after her eyesight had begun to fail, she retreated from the spotlight and settled in Miami Beach, Florida. For the last few decades of her life, she continued to live in seclusion. Her only connection to the outside world was her telephone. On January 19, 2000, Lamar died in Castleberry, Florida of heart disease at age 85. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know Hollywood star Hedy Lamar invented the technology that later became Wi-Fi? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.